Hey guys, uh, I want to make this video right now because I have a few things I want to discuss from the last video uh, called Not the Trick of the Light. Um, there were a few things in there that I misstated or uh, I just wanted to expand on a little bit more, uh, particularly when I was talking about the blind spot. Uh, I did say something incorrect about the blind spot um, and I just wanted to fix that here. And then I just wanted to go into detail about uh, a few of the things that were on the screen, but I didn't really talk about what they were or what their function was. So let's start with the blind spot. So in that video, when I was talking about the blind spot, um, I said if you focus on a letter on a sheet of paper or on your phone or something, and then moved your uh, head towards it, um, eventually that letter would disappear. That wasn't entirely correct. Um, the trick is if you look a little bit to the left or the right of the letter, depending on which eye you use, uh, and then as you move your head closer, you'll notice that that letter vanishes off to the side. So when I was testing this out actually, the letter I was using was just a capital O that was inside of a book. And uh, I looked off to the left, covered up my left eye, and then you know I focused on the left and then I brought my head closer to the page. And lo and behold, the O disappeared, but it was off to the side. It wasn't what I was focused on. In the video, I said what you were focused on is what would disappear. That wasn't correct. The other thing in the video uh, that was actually on the screen was an image of the macula, which is right in the back of your eye. It's where the light focuses in your eye. I showed an image of the macula, and then you saw the words fovea, paraphovea, and periphovea. When I had that image on the screen, uh, I was talking about how what's clear gets focused into your fovea and what's blurry gets focused to the edges. The fovea is where all of the uh, cones in your eye are and the cones are the color sensing cells. Uh, so that's why when you stare straight ahead uh, you can see very clearly and you can see very clearly in color. But on the edges of your vision uh, where it's blurrier and if you pay attention you might actually see that there's less color on the edges. This is because in the paraphobia and the paraphobia, there's a higher concentration of rod cells, which are better at night vision. They're very good at detecting uh, motion, but they're bad at spatial depth, which, you know, if something's flying at you and you see it in the corner of your eye, that's why you don't see it until it's almost to you and you don't react until it's like right here. Whereas in your fovea, you know, your fovea is where the light gets concentrated. It's why your eyes cross on each other. Uh, it helps you with spatial concentration, spatial depth. And when something's flying at you, you can see it very, very well. And you can tell exactly how far away it is. And it's just a lot more useful when it's straight in the center of your vision as compared to coming from off the sides. So just to sum that all up, uh, the fovea is the very center of your macula. It's where all the light gets concentrated, and it's where, you know, most of the cones in your eyes are. It's where most of the color comes from, it's where most of the spatial depth comes from. The paraphobia and the periphobia, uh, that's where your per peripheral vision starts happening. And that's why things are a little bit blurrier. There are more rod cells, which are better at gray vision, night vision, and noticing movement. The last part of the video that I wanted to talk about was when I was talking about cities and mountains and even the sun. Uh, you know, far away objects being concentrated into a camera lens or your eye lens, and why they seem to lose their color and clarity from that distance. Um, you know, I, I talked about how a lot of light is reflected off the surfaces and even more gets refracted off of the surfaces. There is a term for that, it's called Rayleigh scattering. We've all heard about it. It's why the sky is blue, it's why when we are seeing objects from a distance, that those objects appear distorted, uh, colorless, and it's just all an effect from the light being scattered through the atmosphere before it reaches us. So that's what I wanted to talk about in this video. Uh, I'm gonna probably have more videos like this uh, where you know I post my main videos on Wednesdays and I'm thinking either Saturday or Sunday I will post follow-up videos if I feel the need to. Uh, just going into more detail about a concept I talked about um, such as we just saw right now or if I did say something incorrectly uh, and I will try to fix that when I can. So if you guys ever have any questions or you want me to go deeper into detail about something, 
or you think I should fix something that I said in one of my videos just to make it more accurate, um, definitely tell me, bring that up to me. Uh, I'd be more than happy to fix whatever I say or to answer your questions because I do want these videos to be as accurate as possible. And I do talk to scientists on Twitter and I email people and I do my own research and I just gather as much information as I can and then translate that for you guys. So thank you for watching. And like I said, every Wednesday is when I will be posting my main science videos. Uh, and then Saturdays or Sundays is when I'll be posting something like this. So stay tuned for the next video, which will be coming to you on Wednesday. This next video will be talking about shadows and shadows, especially with two or more light sources will be a big part of it, but also how you can bend shadows together, which is just a really neat effect that you can try with almost any light source. So stay tuned and I will talk to you guys later.